Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, Air India's mega deal for 500 jets. Before we understand what this topic is in greater detail, we have an announcement. Baiju's exam prep IAS would be conducting a free IAS workshop exclusively on the Baiju's exam prep application. This will be conducted on 14th of December at 7 p.m. by Mukesh Jassa. What is the agenda? The agenda is how to choose an optional subject for the UPSC CSE. When it comes to the UPSC Civil Services examination, we might be good in the general studies paper. But what matters the most, what creates the UPSC fortunes is the optional subject. How to choose this optional subject? Is it on the basis of overlap with the general studies paper? Or is it because the aspirant has studied this subject from the graduation? How is that you have to choose? Is what will be discussed? as part of this free IAS workshop. So what is that you have to do? The link will be given in the description box. Follow the link, give the necessary information and you would be able to attend this free workshop. Let's get started and try and understand what is this topic all about. We've all heard of Air India. Air India was a national carrier which was under the control of the government of India. Because of huge losses that it suffered, this airline was in fact sold to one of the private companies which happens to be Tata. So this airline was a national airline of India till government of India completed the sale to Tata. When we speak about Air India, it became the epitome of Indian culture, tradition, hospitality, cuisine and most importantly art as well. It also became a medium for Indian soft power across the globe with its grandeur and services close to perfection. So this airline was welcomed as an expression of Indian thought. Air India soon started displaying multiple Indian artworks in its booking offices and airlines as well so it became a medium for Indian soft power across the globe that is an advantage of Air India however this particular company resulted in lot of losses as well it was not able to manage its business because it was not able to manage its business back in the year 2007 another company of government of India that is Indian Airlines was merged with Air India this continued for many years as well and the losses continued to increase over a period of time. When you look at Air India's annual losses for the year 2014 and 15, it was about 5,859 crore. 2015 and 16, it was 3,836 crore. 2016 and 17, it was 6,452 crores. 2017 and 18, it was 5,348 crores. 2018 and 19, it was 8, 2,556 crores, 2,020 and 21 provisionally, it was about 9,779 crores. This meant in the last one decade or so, the government had to pump in a lot of money. And this money that was pumped in by the government of India was all the taxpayers' money. So the Air India was not doing good. The government of India infused the taxpayers' money despite providing a lot of money. It was not able to reinvent itself and what it led to was grave losses for the government of India which accounted for more than 50,000 crores for the last one decade. In fact, that is why the government of India realized that it has to be sold and that is when we have Tata company taking over this particular company. What are the reasons for the losses? When it comes to the airlines management, what they feel is that the cost of the aviation fuel was increasing over a period of time and at the same time, airport user charges as well as computation from the low cost carriers. So fuel prices were increasing. There was tough competition in the market. There were low prices. They were not able to compete. And at the same time, there was no time performance. There was no productivity norms. There was lack of revenue generation generation skills. Why? Because everything was under the control of the government. There were huge number of people who were provided the employment. They were also provided other kind of services as well. They were not able to compete with some of the private agencies and ultimately it resulted in all these losses that we just discussed. So when Air India was sold from government to a private agency, what we saw was a major reform where this particular agency 
was ultimately handed over to a private agency. What were the advantages of it? The minute this particular airline was given to a private agency, what was the major advantage? Tax money which was being paid by people like all of us is now not sent to the airline but instead the government can utilize for the social reforms and the welfare programs as well. Added to it, when this particular airline was given to the private companies of Tata, they also had enough freedom so that they could bring massive changes to this airline as well. They could bring about management changes as well. They could increase the efficiency as well. And it was no more under the control of the government because of the disinvestment. So what we have is this particular airline which was taken over by Tata. Let's look at how this particular airline came into picture. 1932, J.D. Tata launches an airline for transporting the mail. In 1946, Tata Airline turns into a public limited company and is named as Air India. 1953, government passes Air Corporation Act to buy a majority stake in airline from Tata Sons. 2000 and 2001, airline pulls out a joint bid with the Tatas to make over India. 2007, government merges Indian Air Airlines, a group of eight local airlines into Air India. 2009 and 18, government sets up turnaround panel, plans to sell 76% stake, but no bids were received. And finally, in 2021, Tata's win bid for 100% stake in Air India, get control of airline after 70 years when they had initially started this particular company. So because this particular airline had accumulated losses more than 50,000 crores, which was about 70,820 crore as on March 2020, operating fleet was about 115 aircraft, market share was about 13.2% and employees were about 12,085 as of August 2021. Now what we have to focus is on the merger. We have one of the airline companies called Singapore Airlines. It had about 51% in Vistara and Tata had stake in Air India. So Singapore Airlines which had Vistara 51% and Tata which had Air India now come together. They merge both these companies which means to say Air India and Vistara have been merged as per the transaction of Singapore Airlines as well as Tata Sons. Now Air India is close to placing landmark orders of as many as 500 jetliners which is worth billions of dollars. What we have is Air India. Air India is now merged with Vistara. So these companies together are planning to place order for as many as 500 jets. So the context of this article is that there was merger of Vistara and Air India and this merged company now wants to buy or procure as many as 500 aircrafts in the market. The question is, why are they going about buying this as many as 500 aircraft? What we have to look at is the international market as well as the domestic market. When we look at the domestic market, one of the leading agencies that is currently ruling is Indigo. In order to capture the domestic market, Air India feels that they require a fleet of aircrafts. So what have they done? They are making sure that they have more aircrafts so that they could compete domestically with with Indigo. Indigo is one of the companies which has the largest share when it comes to the movement of aircraft within India, within domestically and at the same time. Internationally, when you consider some of the companies like the Emirates, they have a huge traffic flow as well. So in order to compete with the international carriers, let's say for example Emirates, what they require is flights and that is why they are planning to buy as many as 500 ones. Added to it, they also want to increase regional domestic market presence as well. Added to it, they also want to make sure that they have fuel efficient planes as well in order to make sure that they capture foreign market in order to capture domestic market. They have now planning to procure as many as 500 jets. So basically, India is planning to come up with 5 trillion economy and and that is the agenda of the government where the Prime Minister has already spoken about the government's goal to make India a 5 trillion economy if 
we have to become 5 trillion economy one of the basic fundamentals for this is also airline infrastructure as well so with the expansion of this jet fleet what we will have is a more consumer base and as consumer base goes on to increase flying will become affordable and convenient travel option as well and when flight becomes convenient travel option this is going to boost the economy of the country but there are hurdles to this particular ambition what is it air india's ambition to recover a strong global position has some hurdles including frail domestic infrastructure the infrastructure is not that good there are pilot shortages and the threat of tough competition with established gulf and other carriers are the major impediments for the tata sons so we have to wait and watch how they will be able to live a legacy in the form of international travel as well as the domestic travel it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best